your most famous be a work on the PostgreSQL database. So can you tell me what you think led to its phenomenal success? So, so first of all, its phenomenal success had almost nothing to do with me. So, so it, was, it was picked up in 1995 by a pickup team of programmers who have promoted it, shepherded it ever since. And so they, they deserve most of the credit. Uh, and you say, why, why is it taking over the world? Uh, well, it's a much better database system than MySQL. And hopefully, you know, cream rises to the top. Uh, but also, uh, people were kind of afraid when Oracle bought, bought MySQL and that Postgres has remained purely community driven all this time. And I think, I think you know, it, it, it's a perfect example of what open source is supposed to be. I'm delighted that the, the big the elephants, the uh, cloud elephants are pretty much standardizing on, on the Postgres wire protocol. And so I think I think it, it's going to be it, it will become a very very dominant database system. Well, the interface there will be lots of implementations. Yeah, I love that. that um, it is really it's a community that's grown and created something amazing, and it's still continuing to evolve sort of decades after its introduction. So, um, is there anything that you're most excited about in the world of SQL databases? Andy Pavlo and I wrote, wrote, a, wrote a paper. Well, I wrote a paper in, in 2007 saying, you know, what goes around comes around and there aren't any new data models. Uh, Andy Pavlo and I wrote a paper that's going to appear in Sigma Record that's, uh, you know, 15 years later and here, here's a summary of what the paper says, that there aren't, there aren't any new data models that are going to get traction, in our opinion. And all, all the interesting ideas are in either hardware stuff or in new applications. Uh, and I think, for example, the, everyone is moving everything they can to the cloud as quickly as they can. And that's for all kinds of good reasons. And so it seems to me the most exciting thing that I see is that uh, if you're doing one of these cloud migrations, you have a once in a generation opportunity to try and fix the sins of your predecessor. Uh, and so you can either do a lift and shift at which point your successor will inherit the sins of your predecessor, uh, or you can refactor, rewrite, intelligently move to the cloud. And I think that's, that's the most exciting macro trend. Uh, other things are, uh, when you move to the cloud, the cloud basically forces you to have disaggregated storage. And that's forcing all the database vendors to completely rewrite their stuff. Uh, and the reason for that is that networking has gotten the will a lot faster uh, than it used to be, and that enables you to do disaggregated storage. Uh, the second thing is the, the big cloud vendors make it financially very attractive to have software as a service, function as a service, serverless computing. And that will encourage all application writers to rewrite their stuff also will encourage uh, database systems to adopt that model. So there's lots of changes driven by the cloud guys. In terms of new applications, I think uh, how, how is machine learning uh, large language models going to be supported by database systems? I mean, what, what, where's that going to go? I think it's an exciting thing to watch. Uh, I think genomic databases are going to become much more prevalent and how are those going to be supported? 
So I think, uh, and then I think uh, the topic that we're supposed to talk about is, uh, you know, can, can the operating system really become a database system? And that's basically a new application area for databases. So I think new application areas are, are fascinating. And I think the cloud slash hardware changes are, are really fascinating. I'm not expecting anything to happen in, in data models that, uh, that uh, I think the relational model is the answer and I don't see that changing. 